Hey everyone, it's Tammy, and today I am going to make a card holder for the cards that we did with the One Sheet Wonder cards. So I used this um, raspberry colored paper, and I also used a piece of designer series paper that is retired from Stampin' Up! in the same color. And I still have some of that paper, but it's not exactly the same design, and I think that's perfect for the card holder. And on this I used really thin black ribbon and I'm going to use a little thicker ribbon for the tying the box closed. So I'm going to do that but I'm still going to use black and I don't know if I need any white but if I do I will use that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. For this you are going to need a piece of thick cardstock, heavy, nice cardstock for the base of the card holder, and you want it to be six and a quarter by ten and three quarters inches. So I am going to do six and a quarter on this side. And then ten and three quarters would be cutting three quarters inch off. So I just need to cut three quarters of an inch off. I'm just gonna measure that again in my head just to make sure. 10 and three quarters, 11, eight and a half by 11. 10 and three quarters, oh no, just a quarter. 10 and three quarters, so that's 11. Yeah, so I just wanna cut a quarter of an inch off. Well, I'm glad I measured that again in my head. Measure twice, cut once. And then for this, I'm going to score three and three quarters in on each side. So three and three quarters in from this side, four and three quarters in. <laughs> Whew, four and three quarters, because the card is four and a quarter. So four and three quarters inch in. And I want to do that on both sides. So four and three quarters inch. And that'll give us a nice spine of an inch and a quarter. So that's what this is. So now I need to cut pieces for the front and the back of this. See how it's going to fold like a book? You can go ahead and crisp those edges if you want so you can see it a little better. So it'll fold like a book like this. If you want to chomp the edges, you can. I don't know if I will or not. I'll see. But for the front cover and the back cover, I need four and a half by six. So I'm going to cut this at four and a half because I know it's 12 inches long. So I can do four and a half and then six inches is right in the middle. Jambo, what you doing, babe? My cat is messing with something. So this is the, for the front and the back of this. And then I also want a one by six inch for the spine. So I'm going to do one inches. By six inches. And this is going to be this back piece here so we'll put all that together and then I also need um, a one and a half by 12 for the band that's going to hold the envelopes in so I'm sorry I don't have an example to show you right now but I will try to remember to leave all the dimensions below if I forget for some reason please let me know but one and a half by 12 inches is that now if you wanted to create like a stamp holder you could certainly do that, and I would do that out of this paper, but I don't think I'm going to put a stamp holder in this one. I think I'm just going to make it just a regular card holder. And so I also need then the card pocket, and for that I need five by eight and three quarters, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, but it won't. Oh, nope, it's eight and a half. All right, it was left over from the last one. So I need eight and three-eighths inch 
by five. So I'm just going to put my thing out and do one, two, three eighths inches. And then five inches. Now these are all extra pieces, so I do have some scraps, some nice sized scraps really. You could do something else with. And then with this piece, I'm going to do some scoring. I'm going to, on the long eight and three quarters inch side, I'm going to score it at two inches from each end. And then on the short side, I'm going to also score it at two inches from each end. And that leaves me with an inch in the middle, which let's just double check. Yes, it leaves me with an inch there, and then it should be four and three eighths inches here. Four and three eighths inches. Yep, perfect. Okay. Now for this to make the pocket, I'm going to go ahead and burnish all of the score lines. Just fold them on the score lines so that you have them ready. So now it kind of looks like this. And then I'm going to take my scissors and on these score lines that lead up to the middle, I'm going to cut those. And to cut them, I like to make a little V. I go on either side of the score line and I just try to do one nice cut straight up to the point. Just like that. And then it makes a little V. And this just makes folding a little bit easier. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. So here is my card pocket and I'm just going to fold these two in and then this will go up like this. Now as I'm doing this I'm deciding I think I want to put a little card front on here. So this is going to be four and let's say four and a quarter by about one and three quarters. So let me get another piece of this. So I'm going to do one and three quarters by about four and a quarter. Four and, hold on, four and three eighths. I'm just calculating. One, two, three. And then if I were to go one, two back, it's actually four and an eighth would be what I need. I'm going to write that down. Four and an eighth by one and three quarter card pocket front. Okay. Notes to myself so I can help you guys out. So then this will fit on here nicely like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this adhered down and I'm going to use some sticky, some like really sticky tape. 
this is tear and tape and let's see I want it on these sides so I'm just going to take my tear and tape Then I'm also going to want some on the back side because it's going to be adhered to the base. So I'm going to put three strips on this one. All right. And then just push those down. If you're using tear and tape, one of the secrets I think is to make sure that you've pushed it down really well. Just press it against the tape and then I take my pokey tool and just kind of start it about a quarter of an inch down or more just because if you start it at the end you run the risk of like beating the whole part up like um, mushing it and then it you know you, you lose stickiness and you lose tape so if you start it about an eighth or a quarter of an inch down and kind of wiggle your little pointy tool it helps and it just pulls it all evenly and you don't have to worry about um, mushing it up and wasting so I'm not going to do those yet I'm going to do these I'm going to make the box first and then I'll get it ready to it here So then I'm going to bring the little ends up and I'm going to make them match on the edge. Because you're just creating a little box. Kind of like a box. This is what you create. It doesn't have a lid. It's an open box. So now I'm just going to push these down really well. Sometimes I even use my bone folder because I feel like you can get good leverage and really get it stuck on there. I'm going to do that to both sides. Now I'm going to bring this over. And I think for these, I can just stick them on with glue. Let me put the ribbon around it though first. And you can either like start it here and do the ribbon enough to tie it, which is what I'm probably going to do because I don't know how much ribbon I have, or you can run it all the way through. So let's see if I did it like this. Well, here, let me just tie it. these ends together and then I need enough for this side and enough for this side so that should do it and then I'm just going to cut it in half so I have two ribbons and then I'm going to take two of the ends and I'm going to heat them up so that they won't fray. I'm just doing one end on each ribbon. And then the end I did not do that to is the end that's going to go on the actual card holder base. And I'm going to use some tear and tape again. to hold the ribbon down and I'm just kind of putting it in the middle you know what I could do the middle I could I have a measure right here don't I Oops. <laughs> didn't mean to send it sailing so let's see one two three four five six and a quarter about so let me move that over so it's a little more centered 
One, two, three. One, two, three. So this is the center line. I'm going to put this right down here like that. I'll take my pokey tool, pull that up, push this down. Turn it over center it again. Do you see that I wanted to go with it, go in with it with my fingernail, but that's always a, not a good thing for me. I will definitely pull up the tape if I do it that way. And then now I'm just going to make sure that they line up together. And burnish that down really well. So now I have my strings or my ties attached. And I'm going to go ahead and I think I'll glue front and backs and sides down, the front, back and sides down. All right, and then I'm just going to put this right down here in the middle. While I have the spine showing, I will go ahead and put that on. This is a great gift too. Actually, that's what I'm going to use it as. And if you did want to crop the edges or round the edges of this, I would suggest doing it before you put these on because then you can also round these edges and that would make it look nicest, I think. And then I'm just centering this one. So one side's the front, one side's the back. It doesn't really matter which. And then you'll open it up, and this is going to be the belly band for whoops, the envelopes. So this is going to go in here, and I'm going to get my envelopes and have them ready first. I think that'll help. So let me take these, and instead of 10 cards, I actually have 11, if you guys remember from the One Sheet Wonder. So I'm going to need 11 envelopes, and then I'm going to put this down. I'm going to leave just about a quarter of an inch all around, and I'm just putting it down, centering it in the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see that. See how I've left like a quarter of an inch around? This should still close perfectly fine. And then I'm going to take my bone folder again and really give it a good push up against here. Let me grab my envelopes. And like I said, I need 11. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I think that's 11. I'm gonna get one more just in case. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. So these are going to go over here. Oh, and I forgot that we cut out. So this, if you were making a stamp 
pocket. This is where you'd put that, and it's made similarly to this. But I'm not doing a stamp pocket. I'm just going to put this on the front. Because I plan on making a couple, well, a few of these, I guess, as gifts. And I really don't want to have to do stamps for everybody because it would get quite pricey <laughs> if you want to know the truth of it. So I am making it less expensive on myself. And I am just going to add just a piece of the cardstock, which I think also looks very nice. Now, I used to do this kind of thing for my grandma, and I would always include stamps for her. So you might think of your recipient, too, if it's somebody that you think could really use the stamps, then by all means. So then for this, what I'm going to do is I am going to kind of wrap this around my envelopes first. And I don't need it to be super tight, but I need it to be tight enough to hold the envelopes. And keep in mind that they're not going to use all 10 or 11 of them at the same time. They will use a little bit and then come back and use some more. So I don't want it to be super loose, but I don't want it to be super tight either. So once I have that kind of folded back where I think I want it, you now see they probably the directions would say to make them touch, which I totally get because you want to have a little bit, I mean, it looks nicer that way, but I want there to be a little bit of room. So I'm not going to have them completely touch. My two pieces are going to be a little bit off. I hope I'm making sense. Like my two pieces, when they are on here, they're not going to touch at the bottom. So when I'm looking at it, they're not gonna to completely touch. They're gonna to be a little bit spaced apart. And I am going to put some of my tear and tape on here. And I want a nice hold on these because I know that they're going to be, you know, pulling on it to get the envelopes out. <laughs> my cat Jambo says hello. Hi, baby boy. Did you want to say hi to everybody? You want to say hi? Well, you can do that. Let me put this stuff to the side. Come here. Well, come here. Oh my goodness, you're such a love muffin. Of course, you heard of mama first. Oh my goodnesses, I love this baby kitty cat. Say hello. He's kind of shy, but he. <laughs> Look up, look up, say hi, I'm Jambo. Hi, I'm Jambo. I'm a little bit scared, Mama has me on my back and I'm doing something crazy that I'm not used to doing. Oh, it's okay, baby love. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're a good kitty cat and Mommy loves you lots and lots. <laughs> Now he's getting on the back of my chair, but he has my hair. Ah, oh, there. Who's a big king of the mountain? You're a good boy. And I love you. Okay, sorry. Interrupt this program for cuteness overload. Okay, so now I'm going to take these off the same way that I had said to take them off before. I go about a quarter of an inch in and then like pry the top paper off. I don't know a better word. And I don't know why I went vertical on one side and horizontal on the other. It doesn't matter how you do it. Nobody will see. And then I'm going to put this again in the middle. And I'm just going to bring it around again. And I'm just going to put this right down in the middle of the card front. 
And then I'm going to slide the envelopes out if I can. Yes. The bone folder is holding them down. Oh, and I didn't get it very even, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it because when the envelopes are in there, you're not going to really be able to see it anyway. So I'm burnishing that down. Now you can see this end is coming up a lot because I have like extra. I don't know if I like that or not. Let's see. It might just be fine, but I don't know yet. So let me put these envelopes back in. And I really don't think it matters, but I think just because of aesthetics, I'm going to make it. Um, I'm going to put another piece of my tear and tape. I'm just putting this right at the base of that. Sorry, you really can't see that, but you know what I did. I just added a piece of tear and tape down there. All right. And then I'm going to take the cards. I'm going to put them in here. Wouldn't that stink if they didn't fit? I just thought of that. Oh man, I should have done this first. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. It works. Yay! It's a perfect fit. And then you just close it and tie it in a nice bow. You could put a different kind of closure on there if you didn't like to tie bows. I know that sometimes that's harder for people that might have arthritis or just people, some people don't like to tie the bows. So you could even put like a magnetic closure or a Velcro closure doing the same kind of a thing just with paper instead of ribbon and then making it come. So like if I were doing a paper closure, let me just show you really quick. So in case you have questions, you could put it underneath there just like I did the ribbon and then bring it around and then put a Velcro closure here or a magnetic closure here, or you could even do just a closure like this and put a slit in here so that you stick this in to close it, or you could put a big flower or something here to help hold it, and then you just stick this underneath the flower when you are ready. All sorts of options, but um, I like the ribbon just because it went along with the cards. But that is that. Isn't that cute and simple and easy? And you could even put something on there if you wanted to or whatever, you just open it up and the person has all of their cards and envelopes all ready. And like I said, you can put stamps in there too. So that's that. Super easy, super fun, and quick. And I think it's a really nice pr present. I know that people that I have gifted cards to really seem to appreciate it. And um, it saves them time and money. And then they also get to send something that's handmade. And I think that we all need a little more handmade in our life. So thanks for watching. I hope that you guys give this a try. I'd love to see a picture of it if you do. And have a wonderful day. I will talk with you soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.